everyone, it's Tony. Now last week I created a beautiful wall art piece that was made out of paper feathers. Now I wanted to create my feathers because I went online and I saw the way that they collected feathers that we use for craft projects and other things and I thought it was a little bit cruel so I didn't want to contribute to that. Now a lot of you wrote and mentioned that you were really upset of the way Z Gallery collected their feathers and I just want to clarify something. The art piece that I used for the inspiration piece, I'm, I'm not sure how the feathers were collected for that. They may be imitation feathers for all I know, but I, I just didn't want to use real feathers. What happens usually is the store will usually purchase the piece from an artist and the artist would, if she did use feathers, she would probably have gone online like I would have and found feathers um, to buy to create a project, not even thinking about how it was collected and not assuming that birds were being harmed by using them. And in fact, the feathers that they collect in this way are used in our comforters and our pillows and our coats. All the down feathers are um, most likely collected that way. So at any rate, I just wanted to show you another option. And uh, I always like to show you how to use things that you have around your house to create beautiful things that you see in the store. So that being said, I don't want you to go and protest the store or, or anyone. I'm, I'm sure we have lots of products that we use that we're not even aware of the process of getting it to us. So you can just always look that up. Also, a couple of my viewers mentioned that I could use imitation feathers and that you could purchase imitation feathers, which would be great. So I haven't been able to find imitation feathers online. And if I do, I will put a link um, in the description tab for that so that you can look for that yourself. I, I have found imitation eagle feathers that are actually made from turkey feathers that are painted. So uh, that's not really imitation feathers. But if you guys know where I can find any, please let me know. That would be really helpful. Uh, at any rate, I still have a lot of feathers that I cut out for my last project, and I didn't want them to go to waste, so I used them to create another beautiful project for my living room to complement what I already have. So I want to show you how I created this silver feather tree that turned out really great, and it's something that you can do also. So let's get started. Okay, so I decided to come outside and look for some twigs, like some little branches that I could use to um, attach the feathers to. I got my snippers and I'm gonna find some light branches that'll work. And I see some, these are kinda thin, but they'll hold up inside a, a vase. Okay, so I think I figured out what they used to make the crown of Jesus. They must have used this tree because it has tons of thorns in it. But I'm just gonna cut off some of these smaller pieces. And just leave the ones I want to work with, like the ones at the top here. And just turn those down. This is pretty much how I'm cutting it down so that it's nice and defined, some defined branches that I could work from. Okay, so now I have three pruned branches. And I'm hoping that this will give me enough branches to attach feathers in all direction. 
So let's just see how this will work. So I just selected, prune, and cut off all the thorns from these branches. And I'm going to use these branches as a tree. And my paper silver feathers will be like leaves on the tree. Now if you didn't see my last video, I made paper feathers by drawing feathers on copy paper, cutting them in stacks, folding them, and spray painting them silver. You can click on a link above to see how I made my feathers. So I'm going to start from the top and use one of my feathers folded and I'm putting a line of hot glue from the center of the feather down to the bottom. And I'm going to attach that to the tip of the stem and wrap the bottom portion around. Then cut off any extra at the bottom. Then I'm going to attach another feather to the other side of that branch. But I'm going to put the glue on the outside and just kind of wrap the bottom part around. And this one I'm gluing a little lower than the first one. By the way, I'm using a hot glue gun to glue these on and I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks. Next I'm using a larger feather and the next few pieces I'm going to glue on at an angle so that the feathers sort of fan out and I'm wrapping the bottom portion around the stick. Now these leftover feathers that I'm gluing on are spray painted only on one side but don't worry about that because we're going to spray paint the whole tree again after I'm finished. And as you can see I'm just adding on a cluster of feathers at different angles in one group extending from one stem. Now I actually think that this looks a lot better if you start with a large feather at the top and then layer the feathers as you go down. See with the large one at the top these look more like a cluster of feathers rather than leaves. So I'm just adding feather clusters to all my stems on each branch. I also had some stacks of feathers that I didn't spray paint or cut out yet. That's why this branch is mostly white. But you can see how a white feather tree would be really beautiful too. But today this tree will be silver. So let's take these branches outside to be spray painted. So I'm setting all my branches inside an old vase and I spread the branches out a little so that I could get to all the feathers. And I'm using a Rust-Oleum silver metallic spray paint. And I'm just going to spray the feathers and the stems silver. And you can spray a few branches at a time if that works better for you. I also recommend putting on gloves and a mask because you're going to be spraying at every angle to make sure you get all the leaves covered. And you don't want to breathe in too many films so take a break in between. Then you can take them out and spray all the way down to the end of the stems and really get into the cracks of the feathers. But I'm really liking the way this is looking. I think I may also use this as garland for Christmas. While the branches and feathers are drying, I'm going to prepare my vase that I'm going to display this tree in. I'm going to be using this mirrored mosaic vase that I made with another project. And you can click on a link above to see how I made this using metallic paper. So I cut a piece of floral foam that I'm going to hot glue to the inside bottom of the vase. I'm using the foam to help position the branches inside the vase. I ended up using about five tall branches and two or three smaller branches like this to go at the bottom. Your tree will look a lot nicer if you have more clusters of feathers at the bottom as it comes out of the vase. Now to weigh the vase down, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree stones and insert a couple of bags into the vase. This will just help to prevent the vase from tipping over. Now I think it's time to add this to my living room. I decided to move my floor lamp to the left side of the sofa and put a pedestal over here on the right 
to display my silver tree. So I'm going to just put the vase right up here on a pedestal and right here in the corner will help keep it out of the way from being tipped over. And of course the pedestal makes it look nice and tall and like a really big tree. But overall it adds a really elegant touch to my room and it really helps to complement my beautiful wall art. Now I really love the way my formal living room is looking, but I think I need a larger frame over this love seat. So I will probably end up mounting my feathered wall art on a larger silver frame like this. And I think that will be perfect. So I'll probably take a trip to Goodwill and look for a large old frame and work on that later. Okay, so I think that I finally have enough silver feathers in here that will be just perfect for the holidays. And I think that I have enough glam in my living room to last for years to come. So until next time, just remember that every little personal touch that you can make can help to make your house a beautiful home. See you all next week. Now you can pick up all my favorite crafting supplies and products used on this show with the one-click, easy shopping, and fast delivery convenience of Amazon. On my new Amazon shopping page, type in amazon.com slash shop slash your house home TV and you'll find all the supplies for my newest project, all my crafting supplies, project pieces, home decor, kitchen, garden, and more. And pick up our Your House of Home metallic multi-surface acrylic paint. With eight shimmering colors, you can mix millions of colors and paint on any surface, indoor or outdoor, to create endless home beauty. And while you're there, add to your cart our Book of Elegant Home Crafts, Volume 1. Filled with step-by-step -step instructions for your favorite projects. Available here in paperback and ebook. See the information tab for the hardcover. Get this and all the supplies you need for your next project all in one place. I'll be working every day to add great products to make home crafting fast and easy. Follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Snapchat at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV for daily home, food, and gardening tips.